They're getting busy in the bayou. The New Orleans Saints have made another roster move, so we had to hop back on the mic and break it all down for you. It's a busy day for the Saints, and this is why you should subscribe, because we're bringing you coverage no matter how often we have to make a video. So welcome to New Orleans, Equinemius St. Brown, the former wide receiver for the Green Bay Packers and the Chicago Bears. He was a sixth round pick by Green Bay out of Notre Dame back in 2018. And he does have rushing ability, receiving ability, and he can even perform on special teams. He logs some tackles, he logs some returns. So this is a guy who's versatile and will do what it takes to get on the field. And that's what the New Orleans Saints like, and that's what the coaching staff likes to see in their players. And of note, he is the older brother of the Lions wide receiver, Amon Ross St. Brown. But like I said, two roster moves, two videos, one day. This is why you subscribe, because we're bringing you nonstop coverage. Doesn't matter how hard we have to work. Be sure to turn on those noties. That way you can be alerted anytime we post a video or we go live. And on top of that, we like to have a lot of fun and discuss some crazy rumors as well. So lock us in and subscribe. But back to St. Brown. Here is his career path over the last few years. He's a six-year veteran but has only played in five seasons because in 2019, he actually suffer, uh, suffered excuse me, an ankle injury against the Raiders in the preseason that put him on IR that landed him off, the, uh, off of the – Packers roster you know for the whole season because you go on IR in the preseason you ain't playing all year but you can see the production that he put up each year with the Packers and with the Bears up in the NFC North only two career touchdowns this season and he isn't a massive uh you know yards kind of guy production like the the box scores are not going to show that he is a talented or not not talented that he is a massive impact player However, I think the impact when you look at the depth chart is going to be there. I was trying to basically say he's not going to jump off the screen and give you crazy production in 1,000 plus yards. That's not what St. Brown is going to do. But he is an excellent uh, pass blocker who can also be a good role player and add some more bodies and veteran bodies to the Saints depth chart. I like Chris Olave, all right, not I like Chris Olave. Let me rephrase. I don't like Chris Olave. I effing love Chris Olave. I am in love with Rashid Shahid. A.T. Perry makes me want to cheat on Chris Olave and Rashid Shahid. But I'll tell you what, I think Equinamia St. Brown is going to bring something to this wide receiver room. And it's only a one-year deal for Brown, so or for St. Brown. So that could mean that he may not even make the roster at, you know, when we get past training camp. So I'm not going to go and run around and say that this is going to be a move that's going to take the Saints to the Super Bowl because, I mean, it's not. Everyone knows that this is not a Super Bowl caliber move. But this is a guy who's going to bring you some solid run blocking and, or excuse me, some solid pass blocking. He has great blocking ability. And, in fact, PFF over the last three seasons, he had a 72.0 pass blocking grade, an 80.5 pass blocking grade, in 2022 and in 2021 at a 73.1 pass blocking grade he's a player that can get on the field and will do what he's asked he's been in similar offenses and he actually worked with Andrew Janoco with the Chicago Bears and Janoco reached out to his agent that's how this all came to be and like I mentioned a little bit ago he can rush the ball a little bit as well not a ton of production there but 11 carries for 80 yards the average pretty nice if you ask me but here's the scouting profile from Lance Zerline coming out of college on Equinemius St. Brown, saying that his combination of size and speed will be coveted by offenses looking for a prospect who can create, uh, who can create throwing windows down the field with his ability to separate as the route progresses. St. Brown's competitive nature needs to improve as does his play strength to elude early pressure from physical cornerbacks. He has never been a volume target and has just three 100-yard games in his career. At this stage, St. Brown is more of a threat than a weapon and, is, and his ceiling may be an average starter or wide receiver three. Now, this is perfect because the Saints need this kind of player. He's not going to be 
your wide receiver one. He's not taking the top off. He's not a threat, or he's not a weapon. He is a threat. He is a player that's going to make plays and have an impact on the field. And I think that Lance Zerline, what he pointed out in his draft profile or in his scouting profile, deemed to be true. The Saints needed a blocking wide receiver, and they finally got that back. I loved Traquan Smith with the Saints, and when his role was being a blocker, he was excellent in that role. This is also why the Saints brought in some of the wide receivers they brought in last year. Now, I do think that if you have to rely on Equinemius St. Brown being your wide receiver one or two, like Traquan Smith was a handful of years ago when the Saints depth chart was very depleted and very injured, that we have a problem. However, the Holy Trinity is here to save the day, and I think that these three guys, these three cats, are three of the most talented and underrated young wide receivers across the league. I mean, I don't understand how Chris Olave, Rashid Shahid, and A.T. Perry haven't been getting the national attention and the spotlight that they deserve. Olave is a bona fide 1,000-yard receiver. You are getting 1K yards out of number, not 12 anymore, number 2. Rashid Shahid, the speedster, just takes the top off the defense and can open up a big-time play anytime the ball is in his hands. A.T. Perry, if he's catching the ball, he's making a play. Four touchdowns on 12 catches. He didn't even get active in the roster until later in the season. These three guys are going to hold it down. But with the addition of Equinemius St. Brown, they have somebody who can block, who can open up these guys' or these players' roles and can allow them to excel at their position. Now, for me, I need you to grade the wide receiver group in New Orleans. I'm going to give them about an 81. I'm going to go in 81 because I don't think that they're in the 70s range. I really like what Chris Olave can do. I think that he can be a top 10 receiver in this league. Rashid Shahid has excellent talent. And A.T. Perry, there's so much upside there, and there's so much to look forward to in year two with him. I want to hear what you guys have to say. Scale it for me 1 to 100. And on top of that, while you're in the comments section, I encourage you to look for the link to this hat. I've actually worn it on the show a handful of times. And so I wanted to give you the opportunity to go get geared up as the summer's coming around. You might be hitting the links. You might be going out and doing some day drinking. Or you might just want to have a cool lid to, you know, cover up that hat hair. So go down to chatsports.com slash saintsrope. Get this hat. It's super comfortable, super breathable, and it looks good with pretty much every single outfit. All right, so just kind of some final thoughts on the St. Brown signing. I really like this addition because they're going to allow the Saints players to have other options and fulfill their roles as the, Pat, the speedster for Rashid Shahid, as the big-bodied X receiver for A.T. Perry, as just Chris Olave, be you. Just, just go be you. Like, I think that this is an addition that's going to benefit not just Derek Carr, not just the other wide receivers, but the offense and the team as a whole because the offensive production will just be better. And on top of that, I think that the uh, blocking will be much better as well. And I do think that A.T. Perry is set up for a breakout season in 2024. The very limited production of just 12 catches we saw last year was unbelievable. It felt like every single time the ball was headed towards Perry, he was making a big-time play. I gave him the nickname of Scary Perry. I know that Terry McLaurin has that nickname. But it's Scary Perry because that guy is a true freak athlete. And I don't think that the Saints are done adding to the wide receiver room either. I do expect them to bring in at least one more uh, free agent, whether it's an undrafted free agent or a veteran free agent after the draft. But I do think that there are a handful of options for the Saints to explore in the 2024 draft here in a couple of weeks. Now, some of these guys are going to be first round, second round targets, and I don't know if they're going to go wide receiver in round one, but I could see him going a Malachi Corley or a Keon Coleman, or somehow if Brian Thomas Jr. falls to the Saints in round two, absolutely sign me up there. But I also love the option of a Luke McCaffrey or Joshua Cephas in the later rounds. Ricky Persall, he has some really intriguing qualities and can be lethal in the slot, and that's something that the Saints need. Brendan Rice, why not go and get the son of Jerry Rice? It feels like that's just going to work. Lad McConkey, an incredible route runner, and he's not the best athlete, but his technique is what separates him 
from other wide receivers, that would be an excellent addition. And A.D. Mitchell, you guys know him. He is an absolute speed demon. I think that if you just have Rashid Shahid, A.D. Mitchell, Chris Olave, that might be the fastest wide receiver room in the NFL outside of Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle. But I want to ask you this question board before we hop on out of here. Do you have faith in Clint Kubiak and this Saints offense? Just give me a Y for yes or an N for no. I can understand why some of y'all might not have faith because of Derek Carr, but I think with better play calling and a more evolved and more modern system, this offense will work. So let me know what you guys think, and don't forget to subscribe. More content coming, with, coming to you if we get more signings. But on top of that, we got rumors coming to you this weekend. Y'all stay golden. We'll see you in the next video.